Hello small model collectors. So it's been a long time since I talked about a 1-400 scale object. We have two uh, Douglas DC-4s with JAL liveries, Japan Airlines that is. Alright, well I got this from AliExpress. It was pretty cheap for the two. Uh, Diecast airplanes, at least the hobby grade ones, are very expensive. So, uh, but hopefully we'll see if uh, the quality is there. These were not very expensive though. Uh, this is actually heat sealed it seems. I thought there would be... Oh, no, 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 no. Can't even figure out a package packaging. So let's see, I'm reading Wikipedia, so this could all be wrong of course. So the DC-4 was developed initially for commercial airline flight, but then World War II happened and so the US government said, hey, we're taking all of these. And they made over 1100 of the C-54 slash R-5D, two variations of the DC-4 for military use. Uh, but after the war, Douglas did continue making these and they made around 80 of them specifically, you know, for uh, commercial airlines. So over, over 1,200 of them were made, basically. Maybe 1,300. I can't do the math. Um, for uh, propeller engines. And then the interesting thing I found here is these cabins were not pressurized. So they're literally flying in the atmosphere of whatever ceiling uh, these things fly at. I don't know if they had crazy heating systems up in these things or what, but or you just had to wear a parka when you're flying around in these things. So quite interesting. All right, well, uh, let's look at this one because these two images are actually the registration number on this plane. So this plane model is supposed to be this photograph here. Hold on, let me get in a little closer there. Pretty hard to focus between two objects though, keep that in mind. But yeah, the general livery looks okay. Here's a side view. Yeah, I don't know if my the YouTube's gonna show, but my phone is like seeing all the weird lines of the monitor. Like I see a weird wavy pattern there. Maybe I'm not sure if that's my phone display or if it's actually gonna come up through the YouTube channel. I use a Galaxy A7, an old phone by the way. It actually works better than my S10. Alright, so this I believe might be the livery of this plane here, just based on the tail, you know, the, the stripes and all that stuff. Yeah, uh, whether it's the same registration I have no clue, but it looks like the same livery, just in black and white. Okay, let's take a look at these guys. Uh, one other thing I'm reading on Wikipedia, this thing flew up until 1991. So 1942, it was introduced with United Airlines, but then the war happened. And then it flew up until 1991, and many airline companies, of course, uh, use this. The actual manufacturing dates were between 1942 to 1947. All right, so it is die-cast metal. Uh, and in particular, let's look at the graphics. If I could focus on that front nose. Yeah, some Japanese text there. The, the windows are printed on, of course, something this small. Uh, and then, the, I guess that must mean Japan Airlines. Okay. Uh, that's the registration number, I guess. It's so tiny. Yeah, this is not a a high-end die cast so I don't know if you can read that registration on that tail I can't but uh, I'm just looking through a mobile phone screen here it's obvious N88844 so the panel gaps uh, the, these panel gaps are kinda wide actually in the realm of die cast airplanes but again the price is reflected there so it's also kinda orange peely oh, sorry there we go something about this silver paint is very granular it's a little better on the tail tail wings there, ailerons. But anyways, yeah, nice little printing up here. Look at what's, look at the stripes though. That's pretty impressive. Hold on, <laughs> man, these things are so hard to review. Okay, like the offset of this red stripe from the blue. It's it's pretty pretty impressive. It's not perfect, but it's pretty impressive. I mean, this is not a flat surface. You know, they're printing around a cylinder. So I'm always wondering, how do they actually print around this? It becomes a cone, right? There's a little bit of a lighter blue here, surrounded by the dark blue, and obviously you can see it's not very good there. 
Uh, going to the bottom here, we have uh, some details of this molded. No, that's perfectly smooth. That's just a printing. You can see it has rubbery tires, I guess. Yeah, that wheel does spin actually. I don't know why they bother doing that, but it does roll kind of sort of. And then it's got the little flaps here to, uh, for the landing gear covers. Okay, yeah, a little die cast imperfection of some sort. Maybe that's a divot? No, I don't know. That could be a paint in for perfection. All right, uh, yeah, again, this whole printing around a cone. It's, it's really interesting that they can print these things around three-dimensional objects. All right, uh, going to the back. Uh, the wings are kind of thin. Uh-oh, this is not good. The tail is not put in correctly. Or, yeah, I don't want to move it because it'll break the paint. So this one is not the greatest. Yeah, definitely bent. <laughs> that is not good at all. I remember I have bent some back in the past, but I'm going to just leave it alone. And then these props, no, these are actually fixed in place. A uh, higher quality model, these would actually spin. This, uh, there's no branding on this on AliExpress. You just got to look up like 144 DC4 and you'll find this two pack on AliExpress. I think for the price, it's okay. I mean, usually one model airplane costs twice as much as the price of these two. So this is very close to, you know, uh, a better grade. It's just really discounted. So again, the props do not spin. I do like that they have the red, white, and blue printed on the props. So that's pretty neat. And I'm not sure if there's any details in the engine there. Oh boy, this is really hard to focus. Eh, it's just black. I thought maybe there'd be some sort of ribbing or something in here, but no, nah, I guess it's just black. And then, uh, I guess that must be the exhaust or something? Like, where does the... Oh, one that the wheels just fell off. Hold on. Yeah, so be mindful of that. I have to glue that in place. Is this rubber? Oh, boy. You know, this one's plastic. Yeah, maybe it is rubber. It's, I feel like I'm squeezing it a little bit. I can't focus. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna come back after I glue that. All right. So I, I actually ended up wiggling all of them. Another tire fell off, so I ended up crazy going that just to be on the safe side. Uh, just look at this livery here. Yeah, it's just white stripes, uh, a different logo, or a logo up here in the front end. Um, yeah, tail, the, you can read the registration of the tail of this one pretty well. The door lines are printed nice, nice and thin. Okay, so that's it. Alright, let's compare it to some other things. Okay, so I have a few other planes. Uh, don't ask me who made these things because a lot of these things have no branding, just like these two. So if you're really interested in an airplane in 1-400 scale, you just got to look up the livery in 1-400, you know. So this is a Douglas DC-6. Uh, Military-wise, it was called a C-118. And I believe this is a military version because it has the uh, Air Force uh, emblem there. So again, I... Oh, well, pleasantly, this one actually has Herpa on the bottom. So that's a real... You know hobby brand and yeah the props spin and all that stuff but that's about it really I mean <laughs> I don't I don't really care if the props spin but uh, detail wise I think it does have some extra stuff going on oh but look at that that might be some paint rash I have no idea how old that is you'll have to look it up online so I like to have these little pieces of plastic with some labels on them because there's no way I'm gonna remember any of this stuff and I'll leave those out for you uh, a more modern plane, we have a DC-9, a Douglas DC-9, Cebu Pacific livery. And so we have the engines in the back, of course. And then look again, uh, the printing is just crazy. It's literally wrapping around a tube, this printing. Uh, I'm trying to see if that's a brand right there that, by the peg hole. I can't read that. Maybe you can. Okay. 
Not a Douglas, but it's a cool plane. It's a prop plane, so I assume it's from this general same era. Maybe a little bit after the war, maybe during the war. But look at the front end of this thing. By the way, this is a Boeing 377. So it's really cool. It's a double-decker airplane, I think. Unless that's storage down there. So it kind of looks like an airship that just happens to have props. Now these kind of spin. I think those are plastic pro propellers. No branding on the bottom, so no idea who made it. Maybe Dragon? I don't know. Quite a bit bigger though. Oh boy, I have to back out a little bit because the last one is more modern than... And there's a Douglas DC-850 with a Canadian Pacific livery. So now we're getting into the, the days of jet power. And unfortunately no branding again, so couldn't tell you. I don't know why model slash toy companies choose to not put their brand on but oh actually I think I know almost none of these 1-400 scale airplanes are licensed that I'm aware of I think they're almost all illegal representations unless of course maybe they're so old they're part of the public domain that's something we need a lawyer to chime in on because all these other brands you know with the scale cars they're clearly making classic cars and they're putting the, the logos on them and all that stuff so all right, so there's a little model history of some flight aviation. And in general, planes very often get bigger, right? Even this would be considered a small plane by today's standards, but obviously bigger, just like cars. So all in all, I would say it's a pretty good set. I mean, for the price, it's, it's amazing. The only thing is it, the tails aren't vertical, so that's not very good. And then if it bothers you, yeah, the props do not spin. But uh, again, for the price, I think that's fantastic, actually. It's one of the best uh, die-cast airplane deals I'm, I've ever run into. I do have a few other 1-400 scale airplanes on order, so if you like this kind of stuff, maybe you want to hang out. And we'll see you in the next video. Uh, happy flying!